Yeah, 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 everything gets checked out before, and then it goes through another check once it arrives on scene, and then... All right, so you can just say any prompt you want. So I just said, like, FDNY, help is on the way, and then go play it at any, any uh, volume, change the language. It's like very stable. One, yeah, once you stop, it stops. Okay. And where's the camera? Like this. And then uh, this R1 button zooms in. And R2 zoom out. Fire which we from the incident commander to tell us where he wants okay. to look. And then as they as they they ask for different requests that we produce yeah. that for them. So long as we're not flying the drone in the flu, we can't yeah. fly it in the smoke, you know, uh, we can, but then it takes a little bit more decon effort later yeah. on. Yeah. So and more risk, right? Exactly right. And then part of everybody being licensed as a pilot is that we know better. Yeah. So we're not gonna fly. Uh, you can leave that one down, Steve. Yeah, they, they just the want to see the speaker. Yeah, that doesn't have the bracket on for the speaker. Okay. Can you put that down? Uh, yeah, we might as well swap it. Uh, we had a multitude of drones at the building collapse. We had the M300 there. Uh, M30. That was flying. Uh, we also used two Mavic Mini 2s, and Teru was using a couple of their drones as well. This is an M30 as well? Yeah. That's an M30. Uh, we just added the CZI attachments to the top. Yeah, it's a little microphone point. That right there, but I'm going to... Bump up the volume? Uh, nope, that's a loop play. Yeah. You have to record something. Oh, it should be there. Yeah, they are. Thank you. FDNY, help is on the way. What it's like to be a first responder, that 911 call comes in for that collapse, and you're there in a few minutes, and that's all you know, just that the building collapsed. So think about the power of additional information can give to someone who, uh, like one of our medics might be standing in front of that building, waiting to go in and potentially need to put an IV in someone, and it's an incredibly complex operation, and they may have very little information about why that building collapsed, what its stability is, even who's inside, and so every additional piece of information can not only save lives, it can really help that first responder who's, uh, you know, dealing with uncertain, dangerous conditions in very, uh, you know, rapid order and very short time. Uh, give them a little bit more information about what they're going to do. Out of our uh, FDNY uh, command tactical unit and our drone unit, uh, and as you could see, we put it to use a couple weeks ago in the Ann Street collapse, and it was extremely useful and, and beneficial for uh, uh, providing information to our incident commanders uh, and our rescue paramedics and, and our firefighters uh, and rescue units to go in and go in safely and provide all the information that's needed. And, and this, uh, this, uh, this technology is evolving uh, to where we may use it for other things in the future. You know, we, we are uh, trying to do research on if this is something that where we can bring blood and blood products to the scene of major disasters where uh, it would be difficult to uh, get this uh, very uh, uh, um, critical uh, medicine that, that really needs to stay in the hospital until the time it's used. So that's why the drones would be something that would be used for that. We're also exploring, uh, you know, sending drones to the scene of incidents ahead of our rescuers to give us some situational awareness, especially, uh, you know, in situations that are very complex. So the drone really provides uh, uh, eyes and ears uh, for us, and, and uh, it's something that 
you know, we're very proud that we are evolving with, with technology. I want to go back to... Uh, thank you so much for being here. As you can see, this is, uh, for those of you who are observing our drone exercise, this is an incredible conference uh, that really highlights the sophisticated advanced nature uh, of the work that our EMS members are doing. So this is our Search and Rescue Field Medicine Symposium, and this conference is in its 10th year. I hear that we have 10 countries in uh, so it's, you know, really leaders in EMS from around the country coming uh, to the FDNY, the country's largest fire department, uh, again, leading the way in emergency medical services and in technology that saves lives. And really, you know, that's what I'd like to highlight about this. You know, we use technology to save lives, lives of our members and lives of the citizens. Um, all of our technology is meant to give our members situational awareness, uh, let them know what they're going into, let us assess the danger ahead of time, let us assess often incomplete or uncertain information, uh, and then have that going in. So they have uh, a little bit more information about what they're going into. They can be better prepared, safer, and then also, as you've seen, you know, we can send some of this technology to places where we might not have even been able to access before. Um, so we can see where patients are, potentially get to them faster, and have a greater chance of saving their lives. So this is a really incredible day for us. Um, this was used uh, just a couple of weeks ago at the Garage Collapse in Manhattan. This symposium takes place over four days with workshops, lectures, panels, hands-on skill scenarios, and showcases of new equipment. Our instructors are the best in the world, as I think is evident here, and this event serves to educate our members, but also help us collaborate with our other partners and build interagency relationships across the country. Many different exercises are taking place over the weekend. We can talk about a few of those, and it, all of them highlight uh, various parts of what we, uh, our members in EMS, do in the field. Our EMTs and paramedics are highly trained and respond to 1.5, I will say that again, 1.5 million medical calls every year. Those calls make our members uniquely qualified to know what works and what doesn't, especially in an incredibly complex modern city like New York. The technology has changed and enhanced our ability to respond quickly with the best possible information from the very start of a job. And our incident command app, which some of you have also seen, provides real-time data to EMTs and paramedics about what is happening at the scene. It is available to every commander who responds, as well as every member on their iPad or phone in the ambulance. And it's not the only technology that we have used in recent years to help make sure we're providing the best medical care possible and keep our members safer while they're doing it. As you can see, we're exploring the use of drones, and we're looking at every possibility for aerial triage as a tool for medical delivery, and even things like food, water, and medicine in certain situations. Drones can see how many patients there are, give us a way to pinpoint their location on the map, as you saw, and search a large area more quickly. At the parking garage collapse, our rescue medics were looking at the stream provided by the drones and the robotic dog to find out more information about potential patients, looking for the extent of their injuries and how many people were there. Events can be used for, uh, drones can be used for events big and small to allow maximum information sharing in real time, wide search areas, and even in the, uh, potentially future iterations, um, delivering certain critical medicines uh, directly to the patient. The possibilities are endless, and we just want to reinforce again that you know everything we use here is to save lives. I think you saw that at Ann Street uh, a couple weeks ago, where we were able to make sure our members were safer going into an incredibly dangerous situation. And for those of you who just watched the demonstration, I think it's very clear how we could get to more patients more quickly, get our qualified members the equipment they need to go into uncertain and dangerous situations. So we're very excited uh, to be working with our partners, very happy to be the leaders in this space. Over Chief Escobar. It's important to reinforce that the FDNY is an all hazards emergency response agency in 2023. We are not only doing all of the things that you know we're so well known for, responding to heart attacks, putting out fires, but there's all kinds of complex emergencies that we're the lead agency for. Water rescues, as you saw the collapse a couple weeks ago, and so that really requires us to continue to you know build equipment and give our members equipment that allows them to respond, train, and be prepared for that increasing complexity. Uh, so, you know, tools like this, and I, I'd say really, you know, the team that put them together, the team at the fire department who helps stay on top of new equipment, is really essential for making sure that, like, we're consistently keeping up with what is a really ever... El drone nos deja eh, mantener nuestros 
eh, paramédicos y bomberos. Eh, Oh, it has 360 degree hot.